And it got real for the Tall Blacks at the 2023 FIBA World Cup over the last couple of weeks. We've been following that journey nice and closely, and I have five lessons. I've sort of boiled this down to just five bullet points on the on the overall quest from the Tall Blacks. The first one is the obvious one. Never doubt the heart. Never doubt the mana. Never doubt the, the effort, the intensity, the grit, the determination, the passion from a Tall Blacks team. It's just a, no matter who's playing, no matter who's got the jersey on, there's certain fundamentals that you get regardless from Kiwi basketball at that level. And this Tall Black team was the same, even though they didn't have the Webster brothers, couldn't get Stephen Adams back. Um, Sam Wardenberg didn't play. Tom Abercrombie and Rob Lowe both retired. Like there was, they they were notably under strength, particularly at the center position. And But it's like, the, you know, you're still getting them, you're still getting a baseline of effort and energy that, puts to shame many other teams regardless of the fact and they're, they're just they're going to play above their um they're going to play above themselves they're going to punch above their weight regardless it's just that's how tall blacks play basketball we saw it again at this world cup um shay illy finn delaney ruben Turangi. i would have those three as their best players throughout the tournament and i think there were others like um isaiah liapa had a couple of fantastic games particularly in the win over egypt he was great but then also like in between that they in the losses to jordan and egypt he shot one of 15 combined in those two games like there's a Yanni Wetzel had some moments as well and then he also had some games where he was in some foul trouble or just wasn't able to be as impactful against very big centers who were who sort of towered above him uh, there's examples like that across the board um where they're they're dudes who are capable of being as good as Eli Delaney and Tarangi but the thing that sets Eli Delaney and Tarangi apart is that those three brought it every single game there were five games in a short space of time and those guys had the consistency, like the consistency, the level of performance that carried their team throughout. All of them hit big shots. All of them, you know, uh, stepped up when the team needed the most and stuff like this. They were fantastic. Those were the three best players for the Tall Blacks. The as a team, point number three is that curiously, a lot of the traits we saw from them, like we were sort of wondering because they are a different team. They are working through some new options. Would there maybe be like a development process of them sort of unfolding as a team, getting a bit better and better and better at, at more often as they played, as they grew into new combinations? I mean, you got that in the way that any team is going to get into better rhythm as they go along, but also like the the traits of the team in the Japan games at the start of their warm up series were still the traits against Egypt in their last game of the World Cup, and that turnovers were an issue although actually against Egypt was the fewest turnovers they had in any of these games, and they won a close one by two points. So actually that was quite a quite an important point for them, but it was also... In fact, let's scratch the Egypt game and say that was the weirdest one because there was also the situation where throughout they'd been a really good three-point shooting team. It's one thing. They'd been turning the ball over too much, but they'd been making up for that by hitting three-pointers. Weirdly, in the Egypt game, they had their fewest turnovers and their worst three-point shooting, but they won, so that was cool. And But throughout the tournament, that was still what you saw. Is turnovers were an issue, but they could hit their shots. Um, I would say a few other sort of smaller factors in there. Rebounding was never dominant, probably because of the size, uh, and I'll come to that in point four, but they did, you know, they probably rebounded better than they should have, and they were... Um, they were a team that could get some steals to offset their turnovers. They were a team that struggled to score inside after five, uh, at the point at which they were eliminated, which every team had played five games at that point, which is still the case right now. But tonight you get into the quarterfinals where the last few teams will get a couple more games. They were, I think, the third best three-point shooting team for percentage in the tournament, which had dropped from second because, as I said, the Egypt game they only shot 28%. They were also, I think, the second worst team for two point field goal percentage. So, you know, a few struggles being able to convert at the rim and stuff like that. I would say, a large part of that, point number four, is because size was a factor for this Tall Blacks team. I don't know how tall Yanni Wetzel is. I would guess six eight, six nine kind of range, but he's certainly not a seven footer and he was coming up against some guys much bigger than him. Isaac Foto was also an undersized center in comparison. They really would have loved Rob Rolo, who's not only 6'11", 7 foot range, but also can score and pass from the center position at a, at a high rate. Like, they missed him significantly. And then obviously, I mean, 
it's like clearly if you have one player of the NBA, you want to have that one player available. So clearly Stephen Adams would have improved this team a lot, but it's really hard. Like I think he in particular would have unlocked this team so much because of his, the style of player that he is. We have a center who rebounds at a high rate. He boxes out. He does all those things in the team that already rebounds better than they have any right to for their size, but just don't quite have that size. Well, here's the guy who given the size suddenly rebound and become a major factor for them. Plus he passes so well from that position, which would have just, uh, it's, and he finishes at the rim as well. He's consistently one of the better two I know that's partly because he doesn't really take jump shots. He only really shoots from in the paint, but he is a good paint scorer. Just think what that team, what that might be uh, with him. It's, yeah, it's, I can't help, but um, can't help but ponder that point. Number five though, Olympic qualifying lives on. They didn't make their main goal of getting to the knockouts of the, of the world cup. Didn't quite get there. Weren't able to hang on against Greece. So it goes, they still put up a pretty valiant effort. Um, but they did enough to ensure that they will be going to the Olympic qualifying tournament. Uh, I think I think it's early next year. There's 24 teams competing for the last four spots at, at the Olympics. I don't necessarily think they'll get there. It's also not really a feasible opportunity to get Adams in because I think it'll be during the NBA season. However, you know, as a baseline, the Olympic dream does does remain for the Tall Blacks. It's been a while since they last went to the Olympics. They've got a, they're at least got a chance. They have an opportunity. They had a chance last time, and then they backed out. They didn't go because it was during COVID. So this time, they will send a team. They they have something to play for. They have something to build towards. The program has that kind of shining light focus now. And we'll see what happens because as again throwing it back to the first point. Any tall black team is going to turn up and put in a shift. So we'll see how that goes.